Go stargazing. Your mental health needs it. Give yourself the opportunity to disconnect. Look up and enjoy the view. Allow yourself to be in the moment. Give your mind the opportunity to recalibrate. You'll be glad you did. 99% of people who live in the United States can no longer see the Milky Way in the night sky. That means 99% of people in the US live in areas overflowing with artificial light on at night. Now think about that for a second. If you took 100 people, 99 of them would say they can't see the Milky Way in the night sky. And only one person out of those 100 can say they can see the Milky Way in the night sky. For all of human existence, we've been able to see the stars at night, but we are now the first generations in a long lineage of humans that are unable to see the stars in the night sky. With the modernization of our species, we have not only lost a piece of our culture, the night sky, but also our inherited understanding of the cyclic nature of time, order, and the symmetry of the universe. Our ancestors relied on the night sky for their everyday lives. I mean, their lives depended on it. Think about it. They didn't have calendars or clocks or iPhones or anything like that to help them keep time. The only thing they had was the night sky and they had to know how to read the stars. They had to know the positions of the stars to ensure that they planted their food at the appropriate time in the appropriate season and to tell them when to harvest their food and store it and get ready for the cold months so they can endure the winter and survive another winter. Now, of course, we don't really need that nowadays, but that's a piece of our past. That's a piece of our history. And the night sky is as much a piece of our history as the pyramids of Egypt or the Roman Colosseum. The night sky is an essential part of not just American culture or European culture, but human culture. The motions and patterns in the sky gave our ancestors meaning and purpose. Our sense of directions and definitions of direction derive from the sky, such as the pole star or the sunrise or sunset. Timekeeping and the calendar depend on the reliable, repetitive celestial cycles for meaning and measure. While we modern humans have lost our connection to the night sky and our deep understanding of how it's part of our everyday lives, our ancestors embraced these ideas. Even though we've lost our connection with the night sky, there are still areas in the world that you can go to to see the night sky the same way that our ancestors before us were able to see it to see it in its true beauty and its awe. The reason we're unable to see the stars anymore is because of the overuse of artificial light at night. This is a common situation in major cities and suburbs. We call this light pollution. I grew up in one of these places. I grew up in the suburbs of Southern California. And from where I lived, I could only see a couple stars in the night sky. I went 19 years of my life before I saw the stars from a truly dark sky location. That moment of seeing the night sky, how it was meant to be seen, seeing all those stars above my head that are always there that were just hidden from me. It was like a curtain was <laughs> pulled back and I was able to actually see our place in the universe. The place that I went to was Death Valley National Park in California. So what made Death Valley different from where I lived in Southern California? Why could I see the stars so vividly in Death Valley and not in Southern California? Well, it's because Death Valley is so far away from artificial lights. The closest major city to Death Valley is Las Vegas in Nevada, which is about 120 miles from the park. And even though Death Valley is 120 miles from Las Vegas, if you look in the direction of Las Vegas, you can still faintly see that glow of light pollution coming from Las Vegas. Now it's so far away that it's not gonna affect what you see above your head, but it is there and you can see it. Believe it or not, we can actually determine how dark the sky is from a specific location on planet Earth, which is called the Bortle Scale. The Bortle Scale is like a special ruler that tells you how dark a location is at night. Now imagine you're looking up at the sky at night. If you're in a big city with lots of lights, like where I grew up, you can only see a few stars. But if you're in a place like Death Valley, far from city lights, the sky is so dark, you can see almost every star a human can possibly see with their naked eye. The Bortle scale has numbers to determine how dark a sky is, ranging from one to nine, where one is the darkest place you can be, and nine 
is like the brightest place on planet Earth. This will be very important in the next section where you'll use this guide to help you find a spot to stargaze from. A Bortal One is an absolute dark sky. This is super dark, like you're out in the wilderness. So dark that the Milky Way core and the stars above actually cast a shadow on the ground that you can see. A Bortal Two is a typical true dark sky site. It's still super, super dark, but not as perfect as a Bortal One. A Bortal Three is a rural sky. It's dark, but you might see some faint lights from faraway places. This is still fantastic for stargazing. A Bortal 4 is when you start to see more lights from nearby towns or cities, but you can still see tons of stars and you can make out some faint detail in the Milky Way. And this is still a pretty good spot for stargazing. A Bortal 5, we now move into the suburbs. This is a suburban dark sky. There are more city lights from houses and street lights. The sky kind of has this glow that you notice. Less stars are seen and you can barely make out the Milky Way. And you can probably only see the Milky Way if you know where to look and what to look for. This is not very good for stargazing. And as we move up in the scale, it's just gonna get worse and worse from there. A Bortal 6 is a bright suburban sky. Lots of lights from the city and it's harder to see stars and the sky isn't very dark anymore. A Bortal 7 and Bortal 8, you have suburban and urban areas or city skies. The city lights make the sky really bright. You can only see a few stars from these locations. And then we have the worst, which is a Bortal 9. This is the brightest sky. Think like in the middle of a city. The sky is so bright, you can hardly see the stars. A Bortal 9 is so bright, you can barely see the full moon. What? What the? I'm just kidding, you can always see the full moon, but. It's just a really bad joke. The Bortal scale helps us understand how many stars we can expect to see at night. And it's not a perfect scale, but it's a good guide to help us determine, you know, what's a dark site and what's a spot that's really bad to go if you wanna go stargazing. Now that we know the Bortal scale and we understand light pollution, we can use a tool called a light pollution map to help us choose and locate where dark sky sites are around us. There are lots of light pollution maps that you can find online. The one that I typically use is from a website called lightpollutionmap.info. When you first visit the website, you're greeted with a strange arrangement of colors laid on top of a world map. This is a map of the light pollution around the world. This is going to be the tool that helps you find the darkest skies near you. The darker the color on the map, the better. The darkest locations, which we call Bortle 1, are the dark gray areas. The most light polluted, Bortle 9, are white. In between the best and the worst are the other colors. In order of better to worse, it goes blue, green, yellow, then red. It's also an interactive map. So you can click a location on the map and it will tell you the Bortle rating of that spot. Now let's use the map to find a dark sky location. To find a good spot near you, find your location on the map. I'll use Death Valley here as the reference. Remember, you want a Bortle 1 or Bortle 2 for truly dark skies. If you want to see and experience what our ancestors saw every single night, look for a Bortle 1 or a Bortle 2. You want those dark skies so you can experience something 99% of people in the US don't get to experience. Now, most of you will discover that these dark skies, the Bortle 1 and Bortle 2 spots, are far from where you're living, relatively speaking. And if you live on the East Coast of the United States, you're gonna have a tough time finding a spot unless you travel very far. Now, I know what you're thinking. I have to travel that far to see a truly dark sky? Remember when we said 99%? Hopefully you're starting to realize why we've become so disconnected from the night sky. Hopefully now you're starting to realize how bad light pollution has become. A Bortle 1 or 2 is a must visit. If we compare it to something like the Michelin star scale for restaurants, where uh, a, a one star is a good restaurant, a two star is, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head here, but uh, a two is worth a detour if you're uh, in the area, and a three is, it's worth the journey alone. Well, a Bortal One slash two, I would consider like a three Michelin star restaurant. Now, if you're unable to make it to one of these dark sky locations, don't worry, not all is lost. A Bortle 3 sky will do just fine. You'll still see the Milky Way and a sky full of beautiful stars. A site with this level of darkness is still worthy of visiting to stargaze, take photos, watch a meteor shower, or view a bright comet from. I would consider this like a, a, a two Michelin stars. Worth the detour if you're close to the area. 
And as a last resort, you can always travel to a Bordel 4 site. This may not be the best choice, but if there's like a can't miss celestial event, like a meteor shower or a comet or something like that, this is a good spot to go to. Anything beyond a Bordel 4 is not worth the visit with the sole purpose of stargazing in my opinion. Now that you know how to use the light pollution map to help you find a dark sky spot near you, here's some additional tips to help with your journey. First, make sure you plan around the moon phase. A big bright full moon is a wonderful sight, but it's a huge ball of light that will wash out the darkness of the night. The best time to visit your newfound dark site is around new moon. When it comes to best times of year to stargaze, the summer and fall months are fantastic times to see the Milky Way when you're in the Northern Hemisphere. If you're gonna be stargazing during the late fall or the winter months, you'll see popular constellations like Orion or Cassiopeia, but honestly, any time of year is a great time to go stargazing because the stars are waiting for you. So get out there and go experience the night sky for yourself.